Okay, hello, welcome. Going to be continuing with King's Quest 2 first up tonight. <laughs> Don't know how far through the game I am. Uh, but... Oop. Okay, and... Oop. You can hear it. There it is. I just have to give it... Go. There we go. Expand it. There. Okay. And also need to load our game, which was. Here we go. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. I have all these things. Carrying an awful lot. I don't know how Graham is holding on to it. Like any good adventurer, um, he finds a way. It's all in how you pack. I've got a trident. Um, oh, pardon me. We found a stake lying on the ground. Uh, we've got a necklace, a brooch, earrings, a bracelet, which which seem to all go together because they all look very similar. Uh, we've also got a ruby ring and a black cloak, which we got from Grandma. We've still got the basket of goodies. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Grandma said the, the uh, Grandma said something about that that it belonged to her daughter and that we should give it back to her or something. But I don't know if we've seen her daughter or her granddaughter, rather. Uh, we've got a clamshell and we've got a cross. And there was nothing in the clamshell when I opened it. Uh, let's see. Look, cage. This the beautiful nightingale is in a gilded cage. Ah uh, well, get cage. Let's take the whole thing. You pick up the gilded bird cage with the nightingale in it. The little bird starts singing prettily. A moment later, it stops. Okay, and also, apparently you can open the cage and the bird just flies off. Um, but I don't know whether we want to do that. I, I don't know <laughs> whether we need it for something or whether we should keep it for later or something like that. Um, can I show Grandma the basket of goodies again and she'll tell me? Because I've kind of forgotten if she said anything specific about it. Uh, let's see. I did, I forgot to do this too. Knock on door. You knock loudly on the door and hear a muffled, Come in. Open door. Is it Grandma? It is. Give goodies to Grandma. Grandma looks at the basket of goodies. This belongs to my granddaughter, she declares. You want to return it to her. Well, we did find it in her mailbox, so... Um... Uh. Oh, pardon me. Um, we have to find something. So, let's speed it up. I want to go have a look at that shop again, because that shop was closed, but we've done a fair few things since then. Or since I last look. so may looked, so maybe it's changed. The sign's still in the window, so apparently not. Hey, you can move through those bushes, Graham. Well done. Let's see. Look, sign. Sign says closed. Read the sign. Yeah, okay. Knock on door, and nobody's there. Right, okay. So, hmm. I have vague memories of having watched Let's Plays of this in the past, of events which we have to get to happen. Places where we need to go, but I don't know how you'd actually do them. Hmm. Uh, 
And let's go over here. There is the bridge. I never went over the bridge. Is that something we actually have to do? Because we might have to go over the bridge. No! Dwarf! Uh, we might have to go over the bridge to see what's over there. Even though it's like... Kind of inadvisable. Well, I mean... Inadvisable. This bridge is... Wonky and... Look, rope. I don't understand rope. Look, bridge. The bridge spanning the chasm seems to be unstable and tottery. Are you entertaining thoughts of crossing it? Yeah, it... Well, what I remember, this bridge, uh, we have a limited number of times we can cross it before it collapses. And that number of times, I think, is exactly the amount you need to be able to perform actions... Uh, in the game. However, I don't know whether we've done it, whether we've done what we need to do to be able to, uh, do what we need to do over the other side. So let's go over there anyway. Okay. And. Right. Yep. Okay, there's nothing there. Look. Look. Tree. There are many lovely pine and spruce trees nearby these mountains. Okay, and there's this door here. Look, door. This is a magical door! Okay. If you can open it, the door will lead you to your heart's desire. There is an inscription on the door. Read door. The inscription reads, Whosoever chooses to seek the key for this door will undoubtedly make a splash. Hmm. Okay. So it has something to do with the ocean then? Maybe we have to read the uh, messages on the message on the door to be able to get what happens next. So let's continue on. My score just went up. I think. Or my score changed. So. The game is counting how many times I crossed the bridge. Oh, hello. Welcome. Played Peasant's Quest? I have. Uh, years ago. Back when it was first released. That was quite fun. Not as long as these, but it's a nice... Homage. Uh, Peasant's Quest is a game created by the Brothers Chaps who were, who created Homestar Runner and it's a, a game very similar to the original King's Quest games but I think it was actually done in Flash. But it looks extremely similar. And that was what I was trying to get happen last time, when it kept not doing that. So yeah, that's the uh, easter egg I was talking about. Uh, Batman shows up. In his Batmobile, which I think is the one from the 60s TV show. This would have come out in 87. Hmm. When did the first, uh, like, Batman Beyond... Yeah. 89, was it? Something like that. Uh, okay, so... We need to do something in the ocean, I, su I, I assume. Since it said we need to make a splash. Um, but I don't really know where. The ocean's pretty big. We've swam out into it before, and I think you could go three screens before you drown. Something like that. Oh, hello. How lovely. She's just flopping around up there. <laughs> Throw baby. 
deploying Q baby. We don't have a baby, unfortunately. Uh, it's a mermaid, and she's sitting on a rock. Uh, let's save. Save. Eleven. Go. Look. Yep. Look. Mermaid. The mermaid has long flowing hair, covering most of her upper body. Thankfully, otherwise this game's uh, rating would be step would be quite a bit higher. The green scales on her fish tail are sparkling like emeralds as she slowly waves it back and forth. She beckons with her hand. Okay. Slay mermaid. Uh, we're gonna try to <laughs> throw trident at mermaid. Can't do that. Eat mermaid. <laughs> the mermaid doesn't appeal just now. King Graham is allergic to seafood. Um, I don't know. Kiss mermaid. Don't get too close. You might frighten her. Okay. Um, what else have we got? Give clam shell to mermaid. You're too far away. Ah! Swim. Hello. I'm here. What do you want from me? Talk to mermaid. The mermaid does not reply. She gives you a quizzical look and continues waving her fishtail. Um, give clamshell to mermaid. I don't know why she'd want it. The mermaid looks at your offering distastefully. She is not interested in it. No, I didn't think so. Uh... Uh, we can give her a bird. <laughs> Here, have this bird. Give trident to mermaid. You hand a rusty trident to the mermaid. Oh no, she dives into the water and disappears with it. Now she's gone. Well. Dive. Can't do that. Come back! Oh, she's back. Talk to the I don't think we should give that to her. Um, is Cedric in this one? Cedric. It sounds familiar, but I don't know. Who you'd be alluding to. Immediately. Oh, Cedric the Owl. Um, no, that is King's Quest. Uh. Six? Or five? Six, I'm going to say. This is King's Quest 2. This King's Quest 3 is... The one with Manannan. King's Quest 4 is the one with, uh, what's it called? You play as the daughter of King Graham. King's Quest 5. I I'm not, this is the first time I've played this, so I'm having to remember what uh, playthrough is, which I've watched. Actually, King's Quest V might be that one. King's Quest VI, I think, is the one where you play as Alexander. Uh oh, beware, the fairy spell has worn off. Okay, I hope that's not re necessary for anything. Um, if it is, it's going to be quite unfortunate. Though I do make periodic saves. Okay, so, Mermaid. Um... Assumably, we have to give her something, and I don't think I have anything which she'd- Oh, swim. Uh, anything which she'd want. Just in my inventory. I mean, we have all that jewellery, but I don't think that's for her. I 
And we can give her the trident, but she just makes off with it. So... How interesting. You can't actually go up there. Okay. There we go. Yeah, can I, like, dive here? This seems to be deeper. Dive. No. Swim down. Take br Take a breath. Take breath. Come on, spelling. There we go. I cannot get a breath. Sir Graham, or King Graham, is having uh, breathing problems. Um, look down, look. Is there something behind here? Look. Look behind rock. Look. Dig. It does let me dig on one screen. Dig. Dig. Hole. Dig, dig, dig. Okay, you're all through digging. You find nothing. Um, I mean, we can't get like a metal detector or something, can we? Uh, da da da. Look around. I see nothing special. Look. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's something we have to give to the mermaid, and it's something like something which is hers, but I don't know where we'd find that. I'm assuming it would be along the beach. Look, rock. Yeah. Um, like, it's like a comb or something, I think, maybe, or a necklace or something like that. Mm, that's not something on the rock there, is it? Nope. Look, rock. Nope, look, sea. Calm water at the clear blue ocean looks inviting. Look, sky. See nothing special. Okay, look, tree. The leaning palm trees sway in the ocean breeze. Oh, and we can't actually move through the grass there. Are we going to get blasted by some mermaid music again? Nope. Okay. Uh, look. Beautiful sandy beach. Look. Sand. Yeah. Get sand. Sift you through the sand, you notice nothing of interest. I thought it would say something like, you have more than enough sand in your shoes. Uh, look. Log. Push log. Can't do that. Okay, well, let's go back up, and I think that's where the mermaid is. Yep. Okay. Is there anything over here? Oh. God, that music's blaring. Turn the sound off. <laughs> there we go. I can turn it on, and it would never have started. Um. Eat clam. Talk to clam. Get a response from the clam. Talk to bird. Talk to sand. Yeah, it's just a generic sentence. Talk to self. From the self. Oh dear. Talk to Graham. From the Graham. <laughs> Talk to the Graham. Oh, it actually doesn't put uh, the the. I suppose it's only taking the last word. Uh, hmm. I mean, I'm not noticing any, like, pixels which we have to pick up or something. It's 
swim. What if I just, like, swim past? Hey, mermaid. Bye, mermaid. So long. Dive. Not right now. Stop swimming. Swim. You're already swimming. You can't just, like, flounder. Drown. I don't understand drown. Well, soon you will. I thought there was, like, a shark or something here. You are so far out to sea, you have no chance of ever getting back. You can no longer swim. Swim. You can't do that. No, I thought not. Okay. Um, well, uh, Where cross? You place the silver cross and chain around your neck and wear it as a necklace. Take off cross. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. Usually I'd try and puzzle this out myself, but... Okay, um... Well, there is something which I could do, which I just saw. And it's a case of... Whenever I went into the screen, it didn't happen. So let's go to Grandma's house. I don't really like that kind of, you know, oh, it just, you don't know something's supposed to happen until it happens. So if we go east here, uh, apparently there should be Red Riding Hood. Well, I've been in here multiple times and no Red Riding Hood popped up. Look. Dig. Hole. Yeah. So if we leave and come back. Oh. Leave and come back. Do we just have to keep leaving and coming back and eventually it will happen? Or do we have to wait on screen for a bit? Is it here or over here? Let me have a look again. Oh! What is this? It appears you have run into Little Red Riding Hood. She looks troubled. She looks a little troubled. Okay. So we did just have to wait around. Give basket to Red Riding Hood. Red Hood? Gratefully, Little Red Riding Hood accepts the basket of goodies. In return, she gives you her bouquet of flowers. Now, oh, thanks. Look, Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood is a sweet little girl. She has long blonde. Blonde without an E on the end. Locks peeking out from her red cape and hood. Talk to Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood is overjoyed to have a basket of goodies back. Thank you, mister, she exclaims with no exclamation marks. Uh, with no, uh, you know, quotation marks. She can take the goodies. I, now I can take the goodies to my sick grandma. They were already at grandma's house. And you're going the wrong way. Um... Okay. Wave to Riding Hood. Can't do that. Get Riding Hood. Now that wouldn't be very nice, would it? Anything? 
Don't need to be considered one god. Yeah, I suppose. Yes, definitely not. Have to try it for every character in the game. <laughs> Agatha gave the funniest response so far. Unfortunately, it did give one for the wolf. It just says you don't have time for that. Boo. Um, okay, so we did that. We got a bouquet of flowers. Look, flowers. Many flowers beautify these woods. Not those. Not those flowers. Look. Great. Um, bouquet of flowers. The bouquet of wildflowers is very pretty. The sweet scent is delightful. Eat bouquet of flowers. Bouquet of flowers doesn't appeal just now. Yeah, well, I suppose not. <laughs> um, I suppose we give these to the mermaid. If she like them. I don't think they would... Uh, I don't think they would... You know... They would really go too well in the water. Ah! This is not an instant death. Ah! Swim! Okay. I might have to turn the sound down in the game just for that. Give Bo. Ah! Oh. Give bouquet of flowers to mermaid. You graciously offer the beautiful bouquet of wildflowers to the mermaid. She loves the flowers. She then summons forth a magical seahorse. Good ride it. Look, sea horse. This is larger than average seahorse. It has a little saddle attached to its back. The seahorse tosses its head expectantly. Talk to sea horse. Don't, don't you know that seahorses can't talk? Has anyone ever tried? Maybe they just don't have much to say. Um, kiss seahorse. Can't do that. Oh, come on game. Get seahorse. Magic seahorse is already here for your use. Um, tickle seahorse. Don't understand tickle. <sighs> Ride, sea horse. Quick as a flash, it glides under the water with you on its back. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Look. The bottom of the sea is teeming with fish and plant life. King Neptune rules this mighty underwater empire. We've just gone just under the surface. Isn't it a bit presumptuous? Uh, look. Shell. This is just a door. No, not that one. Look. Doll. Fin. Look, shark. Look, shark. You can see many beautiful creatures at the bottom of the sea. Sharks are pretty beautiful. Oh, hey there. Oh, I can actually direct this? Look. What a BP tune. The bottom of the sea is teeming with fish and plant life. King Neptune. Yeah, okay, fine. Look, Neptune. King Neptune is tall and imposing. With a flowing robe and long greenish grey beard. A crown fashioned of shells and pearls adorns his head. Look. Poseidon. Okay. Fine, fine. So we're using the Roman name. Look. Clam. The enormous clam behind King Neptune is tightly shut. Kiss Neptune. Not right now. <laughs> How am I breathing? I don't understand how. Breathe. Drink. Drink water. You can't do that. Well, I suppose there's too much to drink. Look. Starfish. Fush. Look. Sand. Dig hole. Get off seahorse. Magic seahorse helps you breathe underwater. Without it, you would die. Oh, okay. I'm glad they clarified that. Pat seahorse. Ah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice that you can pat the seahorse. <laughs> um, pat 
Neptune? You can't do that. Aw. Get Neptune. I beg your pardon? <laughs> He's there, therefore we need to have him in our inventory. Get crown. You cannot get the crown. No. Oh, look. Crown. Look. Beard. Oh. Look. Water? The bottom of the sea. Yeah, fine. Um. Look. Green. Man. I would have thought maybe it would have, like, options to talk to the guy without actually putting in Neptune. So you can just say, look, man. Oh, it does. It accepts that. Talk. Man. Glub, 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 glub. Give trident to Neptune. Re rever reverently, King Neptune accepts he's lost trident from you. He uh, just tossed it onto land at one point. He gives you a bottle, then waves the trident in front of the huge clam, which opens and reveals a large golden key. Hey, thanks, buddy. Get key. Okay. Look. Key. Key. It's a shiny gold key. Eat. Key. <sighs> Fine. Get. Trident. <sighs> Fine. Wave. Goodbye. Bow. Bow. Oh. Okay, well, I think we've done everything we can here. Uh oh. Oh, it's all, it's in automatic now. I like how it uh, allows you to control it for that screen. It would be nice if you could control it for these screens, but... Look, Coral. Coral. Look. Fish. I'm not carrying it. Look. And... So apparently, oh, <laughs> right, yes, uh, that's breaking the uh, course of the game a little bit there. Uh, inadvertently. Save 12. Okay, so what did we get from King Neptune? We got a bottle and a gold key. Look, bottle. This is a lot. There is a large cloth in the glass bottle. Get cloth out of bottle. Not right now. Open bottle. The glass bottle is already open. Get cloth. You pull a large piece of cloth out of the bottle. Look, cloth. It's a large sheet of cloth. Uh. Where? Cloth? Not right now. Eat. Cloth. Um. Kiss. Cloth. Yeah, fine. Uh, so we got cloth, and we got a key, so I suppose we can go back to that door now because, hey, we got a key. That was what we were supposed to do. Speed it up. No, no don't go in there. That's instant death. Whoa. Come on, Sir Graham. Move those noodly legs. Yep, and yep, whoop. Okay, there's a little bit further over. Careful. Oh, there's a back to the place. I don't think I checked that. Uh, look, window. You can see inside when you look through the window. It is hard to tell details so. though. Oh, it says the same thing as we did for looking through the window at the front. Uh, I'm going to slow speed down so that we don't drop off the cliff as soon as we appear in the next screen. I wonder if old PCs would have had a problem if you'd have put it on fast speed. Like, would it have moved, would it have been trying to f make the game run too fast for the computer at the time so it would have just made it really slow. Because the game's like running faster. So I'd imagine it would have made the computer uh, chug more. Okay. Use key on 
Hold on. There's important things we need to do. <sighs> Talk to door. Use key on door. <sighs> Unlock door with key. Unlock door. The key to the first door fits easily into the keyhole. Oh. I like how it says that there's a first door before it reveals that there's more doors. Uh, you turn the key and presto. The door opens and the key disappears, revealing a second door with another inscription. Yeah. Um, I, I thought the game had responses to magic words like that. Actually, that might be in another game. I think that's in another game. Look. Door. This is a magic door. If you can open it, the door will lead you to your heart's desire. There is an inscription on the door. Read. Door. The inscription reads, Whosoever chooses to seek the key for this door should set their sights high. Okay. Um... I've got to save again. Wrong one. Save 13. And um hmm. Well, uh I'm just gonna take a brief break and I'll be back in a moment, so stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Now right, so it says that we should set our sights high. Um look cloth. Yes, a large sheet of cloth. Is this like I did save. Uh put cloth on ground. Can't do that. Use cloth. What do you wish to do with it? Uh sit on cloth. Not right now. Okay. Maybe the shop's open now. I think as long as we, like, every time we go across a bridge, we perform some action, it will be fine. We might have one, like, uh, grace crossing. I'm not too sure on that. Uh, we need to... I want to go back to the shop. Let's see. Oh. These games would have been really great at the time. Just exploring a world. Um, apparently the shop's not open. The sign's still there. Look, sign. Oh, it says open. Oh! It is actually open. I was expecting if it was open, the sign would be gone. Knock on door. You rap loudly on the door and hear a cheery, come on in. Open door. A little old lady in the antique shop says, how may I help you? Is it grandma? Look, shop. You are inside a cute little antique shop. Old furniture and knickknacks clutter the place. Against the wall, a glass display case holds many small items. A little old lady asks if she can help you. There's nothing but, like, old ladies here. There's Grandma, and there's this one. And then there's Hagatha. Look. Moose. Well, what do you call that? Look. Head. Look. Mount. Did we leave the door open? Close door. Can't do that. Suck in the door frame. Get sign. Look at sign. Now, it's in the window, but we can't get it now. Look at lamp. Look, it's right there, Graham. Look. Desk. Look. Lady. 
This old lady is tiny, with twinkling blue eyes. Her white hair is done up in a neat bun on top of her head. She is sitting in an old rocking chair. Which came first? <laughs> the old lady or the rocking chair? Uh, look. Candle. Look. Stand. Look. She's got like a... Actual lamp there. Look. Display case. You see antique knickknacks in a display case. Nothing there interests you. Yeah. Fine. I suppose so. Talk to lady. The little old lady motions towards an old oil lamp. This is a new item in my shop, she says. I thought you might be interested in it. Um, maybe. Kiss, lady. You can't do that. Oh, pff, come on. Uh, there's a back room, apparently. Open door. Oh, look. Bench. Look. Chair. Fine. Get lamp. You can't just take the lamp, you have to buy it. Buy lamp. The old lamp is expensive, the little old lady says. It will cost you two treasures. There is an alternative though, she said. The old hag, Hagatha, stole my precious nightingale. If you can return it to me, then I will give you the oil lamp. Yeah, okay. Well, as luck would have it, I actually have in my pocket open cage. You open a pretty bird, you pretty bird cage, and a nightingale swoops out. The bird is gone. You have nothing but an empty bird cage. Give cage to lady. You show the empty bird cage to the little old lady. Where's my little bird? She exclaims in dismay. I don't want an empty cage. <laughs> I thought maybe the bird would return to her. Um. Give cage to lady. You hand the birdcage with the nightingale to the little old lady. My precious! My precious! She exclaims. In gratitude, she gives you the oil lamp. Good luck, she says. She hastens out the door and closes up shop. <laughs> oh, reminds me in uh, King's Quest 7. What is it? Oh, jeez! What? Okay. Uh, we got the lamp. Yeah, we did. Oh, what's that bull in the shop? Oh, my, my sweetie. Or something like that. I've just never been the same without my precious sweetie or something. Um. Look, oil lamp. The old oil lamp is fashioned of brass that has been tarnished. <laughs> and there is brass oil caked within all the tiny crevices of it. Apparently someone was trying to make it shiny and they just never gave up. There is a spout at one end and a round handle at the other. The lamp is empty inside. Open lamp. You can't do that. Talk to lamp. Get no response from the lamp. Eat lamp. Knock on Lamp. Ugh. Grub. Well, you know. Let's save before we do that. Oh, oh, you've run into an evil enchanter. Get out of there fast before he turns you into something. Well, he appears at that screen. Can we just, like, wait around for him? Come on. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> Where are you? He's not here. <laughs> oh, but if he was. <laughs> he certainly is an enchanter. Oh. Come on. 
You gotta show up. <sighs> Fine. Come on. Do 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 do. I should spell it out so that it's already ready to go. <laughs> Locked and loaded. Um. It didn't take that long the first time, did it? Do 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 do. Uh, I wonder if it's possible you can make a mecha you can make a mechanic or like a uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, not a mechanic, a uh, like a plugin for the game where if an event is supposed to happen on screen, you have like a red dot, and then if the event is going to occur, it turns to a green dot. I just have to read the game. Uh, my limited knowledge of programming, extremely limited, non-existent, I might say, uh, would make me think you just have to read, like, a particular part of the game to see whether events going to fire off or not. Because it would be, like, a percentage, a, a chance every time you enter the screen that it would occur. Eh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Get through those trees. Rub. Lamp. <coughs> oh, hey, buddy. When you rub the TARDIS brass lamp, you hear a poof, and a genie appears. Master, he says. I leave a gift for you. A magic carpet. The genie then poofs back into the lamp. Can't do that. Oh, he gave me a magic carpet. That's pretty cool. I think it'll give me. Do we have to wait on that, or can we just like do that the whole three times and get all the items we need? And then he'll be like, you know, I need a holiday. He'll go get drunk and stay in a cave somewhere. And then we'll have to get him a cup of coffee. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, some disgusting coffee. I don't even know if it's coffee. I'm referencing another game. Don't, don't worry. I mean, I, I will play through Simon Sorcerer 1 and 2 sometime. That's from Simon Sorcerer 2. Oh, that game is so weird. The graphics in it are very, very nice. Whoops. Okay, fine. Well, I think we have to fast. Let's go near the cliffs and then do that because I think we. It said we have to go up, and sort of the only real area I can think of where we need to go up is up the cliff. So, you know, rub, lamp, kiss, genie. Not right now. Get genie. Cannot get the genie. Genie? No, you don't. Do we give him a moldy banana? Okay, he gives me a magic carpet. Rub, lamp. Uh, ah! Hold on, hold on. Sorry for the noises. Save. 16. Rub lamp. Hey there, buddy. You're my friend. You would never leave me. I have your home. Rub the lamp. You hear a loud poof, and the genie magically appears. Master, he says. I leave a gift for you. A beautiful sword. The genie then disappears in a puff of smoke. Look. Carpet. 
The magic carpet is a beautifully woven Persian rug with a colourful fringe on the ends. Uh, no. Graham's so picky. Look, sword. The shining sword is not incredibly sharp, but it's very... No. The... How did I see sharp from large? The shining sword is not incredibly large, but is very sharp. It has a snake carved into the bronze handle. Eat sword. So fine. Use sword. What do you wish to do with it? Two exclamation marks. Rub lamp. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Using your sleeve as a cloth, you rub the lamp, causing the genie to appear again. Master, he says, I leave a gift for you, a leather bridle. The genie then pops back into the lamp. Oh no, the lamp has disappeared from your hands. Oh well. Okay, I think we got everything we needed out of it. <laughs> uh. 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 Okay, so we got a bridle. Look. Bridle. The leather bridle is studded with silver rivets and a silver bit. Use bridle. What do you wish to do with it? Eat bridle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, use carpet. Sit on carpet. If you wish to ride on the magic carpet, then just say so. Ride carpet. Wee! We're clipping over the tree. Hello, welcome. And I can't control this. Nope. Look. There are steep cliffs on three sides of this mountain top. Don't get too near the edge. Ponk. Look. Carpet. Yeah, okay, we've still got it. Look. Down. Look. Cloud. Look. Mountain? Yeah, okay. I didn't mean to disappear. I literally fell asleep on my chair for six hours. Oh dear. Oof. It's more important to get to sleep than, than to watch me. Look out! There is a poisonous viper blocking your path. Uh, sleep is important. I like sleep a lot. It was 2pm though. Well, well, yeah. I'm from Australia? I am. Uh, that, I gotta say that snake looks less terrifying than the one in Hugo 2, but that, the one in Hugo 2 gave me nightmares, so look, snake. The snake appears to be about 10 feet long. It is coiled and ready to strike. Look, snake. No. Look, tree. There are a few pine and fir trees on this mountaintop. Talk to snake. S stay away or I will strike. Hey, it actually talks. Tell jo joke to snake. Don't understand tell. Um, save 17. Kiss snake. S Aww. Come on, man. Look, snake. Yeah, okay, I did that. Get snake. Are you joking? Are you joking? It's saying that was an exclamation mark and not a question mark. Interesting. Jest. <laughs> Jest with snake. Uh. Did I say jest? <laughs> uh. I don't know any snake jokes. Not off the top of my head. Um. Tickle. Snake. I don't know. What else can you do with a snake? Um. Other than tickling them. Give. Cl clam shell to snake. Give. Clam to snake. Give carpet to s 
snake. Can't do that. Eat it. Eat a snake. <laughs> snake doesn't appeal just now. <laughs> Insert thing from, uh, what's it called? Metal Gear Snake Eater or whatever here. What's the quote from it? I don't know. I haven't played any of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the snake in Hugo Two is freaking. I don't know. It just scared me. It, it. I think it was the way it like advances on you. It just like wiggles around towards you, ready to strike, and it just follows you. And it's like, ah, oh, get away! This one's just sitting there. So as long as we don't get too close, we should be fine. The snake has struck you dead. We weren't that close. Talk to the snake. As you were dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I suppose we asked for that. <laughs> we have to try and eat everything. I tried to kiss it. Sadly, it doesn't work. Um, I, I, okay. I do actually know what we're supposed to do here. And I'm glad I do because this is a rather inane. And, you know, it's one of those things where people were like, Ugh, what a stupid puzzle. Uh, throw bridle at snake. You toss the leather bridle onto the coiled snake. Instantly, there stands before you, not a snake, but a beautiful winged horse wearing the bridle. Talk to horse. Thank you, kind sir, for saving me. An evil enchanter turned me into a snake when I refused to be his steed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it now. It was originally a horse. I was thinking, why would the enchanter want a snake as a as a uh, steed? <laughs> Getting confused in the uh, series of it, series of uh, what's it called events here. To repay you, here is a magic sugar cube that will guard against poisonous brambles. Where, where to keep that? Ride horse. The horse is flying away. You pay it and pays no attention to you. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to do this again. Um. Th throw bridle on horse. Not right now. Yeah, fine. It's not a horse yet. Snake. Why? Whatever. Kiss horse. Not right now. Oh. Ride horse. The winged horse has a very independent nature. It doesn't want a rider on its back. It's wearing a bridle though. Take bridle. No, not bridge. What? Ha what fingers? Fingers? What are you doing? Did you really just type out bridge, not bridle? Take bridle. Can't get the bridle. Oh, okay. Talk to horse. Yeah, okay. Look, cube. Looks like a normal sugar cube. It does have a bit of sparkle, though. Curse horse. Curse horse. Don't understand horse. Crap. Don't understand crap. <laughs> uh. These are bad words. Uh. Come on, game. Work with me here. Sometimes they have uh, responses to... You know, swearing. Swear. Bad word. Don't understand bad. I don't understand good. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But it is unknowable. Um. Is there anything over here? Okay, there's a cave. And there's a hole. Save. 18. Look. Hill. Oh no, this is as bad as bad can be. Upon looking into the hole, you believe you see an incredibly blatant plug for another th Sierra 3D adventure animated adventure. Hang on. 3D? I suppose... Yeah, I suppose at the time they would consider this 3D. You're moving in like a... Technically a 3D plane. It's a 2D plane, but you know... 3D enough for the time. Uh Seen it! Boring! <laughs> Seen it, been there, done that. 
bought the uh, t-shirt. In deep space, a vessel flips. Unbelowing to you, the dreaded Saurians, those bad boys of the universe, plan your destruction. Was it Saurians? I think it was Saurians. Space Quest is a 3D animated adventure game. As a hero, you explore strange vessels. Visit bizarre planets. A desert planet. Oh no! Let's play it. Get friendly with the wildlife. Yeah, that stupid spider thing. And get acquainted with some darn interesting folks. So step up to the bar and have a cool one and enjoy some of the best entertainment in the universe. It was a pretty fun game. More linear than this, so. Enjoy for s enjoy, for soon you'll come face to face with the dreaded Saurians. Briefly befuddled by this bizarre event, you brace yourself and continue with the quest before you. Yeah, not the space quest. What is space quest? I don't understand space. 1989. Yes, indeed. The, uh, thingy up the top is saying 1987 for King's Quest 2. I'm just going to check that because... I like, have, I like knowing the years those ca these came out. King's Quest 2. King's Quest 2, Romancing the Throne, the second installment in King's Quest series. It came out in May 1985 and 1987. I suppose that was a re-release. Uh, the game was first released in 1985 on a self-booting disc that supported CGA, PC Junior, and Tandy graphics cards, as opposed to King's Quest 1, which had separate versions for all three. 1985, as a disc that booted on startup, Sierra included several modifications to the AGI engine for compatibility with the IBM AT and EGA cards, which had been introduced since King's Quest 1 was released. The copy protection used on King's Quest 1 proved to be incompatible with the AT BIOS, so a different scheme was used. Color palette selection in CGA mode may was you changed to utilize the BIOS instead of modifying the palette register directly. The game engine was also changed to utilize the PC's Timus chip instead of a CPU-based speed loop, which would result in the game running too fast on the AT. Okay, well, fine. I made general sense of that. It was re-released in 1987 with EGA and Hercules support to run under DOS. Ah, right, okay, that's the version we're playing. That makes sense. It was also released on Apple 2GS version with improved soundtrack, sound effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yep, sure. Fine, fine. Oh, hang on, what version is this? Uh... 4.10. Okay. So we've got the, yeah, the 4th 10. This is the version that's included in most copies in King's Quest collection. It has, has the disc-based copy protection removed. Okay, and there's a later version too, which came out in 5th of the 7th. Which would be the American standing for things. So that would be the 7th of May. This version is associated with the Amiga release. There are two subversions. One uses Interpreter 2.426 and the other uses 2.917. Uses AGI 2. Okay. Have I played Acalabeth, World of Doom? It's from 1979. No, I am. I do know of it. That's the uh, game which was made by Lord British. I'm meaning to play through the, King the Ultima series at some point. I'd probably start with Ultima 5. The ones before then, even Ultima 4, are a bit grindy for my tastes. Even though Ultima 4 is sort of easy to break. And the ones, be the ones before that are sort of... Acalibus is actually free on GOG. I think I have it? But I don't think I'm going to play through it. Acalibus is like an earlier version of Ultimate 1. Ugh. Anyway, after that plug, look in hole. Hit. Hole. Oh! Um. <laughs> really? Again? I didn't think it would do it twice. Uh. Oh boy. Trap yourselves in. I'll turn the sound down. 
Yeah, there we go. Haven't played it either, though. No, I... Can I just click through this? No, I can't. <laughs> Force advertising! Um... I mean, maybe I would have a look at it briefly, but I don't think I would play through it. These older games... These older games. Um... I think, I know, from, as I said, I think they've got a lot of grinding the, in them, and they tend to be quite unforgiving and not balanced very well. Um, I don't have experience playing these old RPGs. The oldest RPGs I would probably play would be the uh, Gold Box CRPG games. Which is the kind of difficult which I'm used to. Whereas the other ones are sort of a bit... Uh. Anyway, let's not look at that hole again. That hole is a bottomless hole of plugging. Save 19. Like Ultima 4, I'm pretty sure, you have to, like, to be able to cast spells, you have to get reagents, and reagents require you to get them from a store, or I think you can possibly find them on a world map. Maybe. Um, but you can only carry 99 of them, and I believe it means you have to keep going back to the store. And the last dungeon is really long, from what I've seen of playthroughs, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think I've would play through the four. Five and six are more manageable from what I've seen. You play Fallout 1 and there's so much grinding. I think I might play through Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. I haven't actually played them a bit. I think that's a bit more manageable for me. If only because there's more going on. It's uh I don't know. Um the remaster of Wasteland 1 is out as well. Ooh. Also, welcome to people. Uh, let's go into this cave. Look. Cave. You see a large golden key lying on a rock in the damp cave. Look. Damp. Don't understand damp. Look. Dumpe. Don't understand dumpe. Get key. Is bigger than I am. Get key. Okay, look key. Shiny gold key. It's basically the same thing. I wonder if I wonder if it's the same object in the game. Um, and it just removes it when you open the front first door. So if you were able to retain it after opening the first door, would you be able to open the second door with the same key item, or would all the keys be separate items in the games in, in the games? Uh, logic. Or the game's engine. Hmm. Remaster and Wasteland 1 is out as well, though for what I read, the controls are the same, which is a pain in the rear. Oh dear. Do I finish the game when I get 185 score? Uh... You're most likely going to have finished the game when you get a 185 score. It's not... Uh, the score is more a an indicator of um, how much you've... how many of the puzzles you've solved. Um, advancing through the game will give you points because you're solving puzzles. Um, but you might not finish the game with a full score because you haven't solved all the puzzles in the most complicated way or, you know, the way which might give you extra points. There might have been things which you didn't perform, like looking at a certain object or trying to do something else before you solve something or so on. So I think in King's Quest 1, like, in King's Quest 1, there was a bowl which we found, and the bowl has the word Phil written on it, and if you say Phil, 
Uh, it fills the bowl up with um, stew. Now, this bowl you give to a couple um, in a house so that they can feed themselves. And if you give them the bowl of stew filled up, then they'll be like, oh, thanks. You know, but we'll finish this pretty quickly and then we'll be hungry again. So what you need to... Uh, you'll get points for giving them the bowl and they will give you the object you need to p proceed. But a better outcome, and one which gives you more points, is to give them the empty bowl and then when it's on the table, say fill, and then they'll see that it's magical. And they'll be like, oh, we now don't have to worry about food anymore. Or as long as we don't worry about eating stew. Now I kind of feel like stew. Um, so you get more points for solving it that way. There's another case where you could, you have the choice of killing a dragon, or you can like, throw a bucket of water in the dragon's face, and get rid of it that way. And uh, the non-lethal method is better, gives you more points. In the King's Quest games, you generally want to avoid the uh, lethal option, or the violent option. Okay, here's this door again. Open door. The second door is locked. You cannot open it, no matter how hard you try. Unlock door. The key to the second door fits easily into the keyhole. You turn the key and shazam! The door opens, and the second gold key disappears, revealing a third door with yet another inscription. Okay. This one's a green door. Yes, it is. Uh, look, door. This is a magical door. Yeah, yeah, read door. Whomsoever chooses to seek the last key must have a stout heart. Okay. Do I need to have a medical check or something? Right. And I'm pretty sure I know what we need to do for this now. I was stumbling around a bit earlier on trying to figure out what to do, but once I figured out... Once I sort of read that... what I was supposed to do... We've been uh, cruising pretty fine. It was just going to a certain screen and the character popping up, which I was missing. Even though I've been on the screen several times, and sometimes you just have to wait on the screen, which is a bit... iffy. Uh... Wait, is that bell not ringing? No, it is. I've got my headphones down. Okay. That's the home of the dwarf. The little thieving bastard. Under the language. <laughs> um. I wonder if Haggatha's home. We saw Batman's car earlier. That was the uh, Easter egg which I was trying to get to go off last time. You enter and exit the screen several times and, uh, well, eventually it will happen. It's just like a small chance. Batman's car will drive out of the cave and then back in. Hey, Hagatha. Hey, you're home. <laughs> you're the only one I need. Okay, um... Uh-oh. He must have got lost. I don't think he belongs in this story. Can we block him? Ah! Oh. Well, there we go. I tried multiple times last time to get that to happen, and now it's happened twice in the same session. Uh. That's Batman. Ah! Swim. Oh. Hey! 
Get off me! Aww. No! Boo. There's not much you can do once you uh, lose that. Oh, hang on, actually. Uh, previous. Auto save. Is that actually... Score is 115. Score is 109. Okay, so this one's more recent. <laughs> she just swooped in and grabbed me. Unlock door. She knows a catch when she sees it. Um, read door. Yep, okay. Go, Sir Graham. She didn't like that kiss. Oh. I don't know whether we're actually doing that or not. <laughs> I like to think that we are. It's just like a stealth kiss, you know. Uh, <laughs> I like that they've got responses for all that stuff in it. It's fun. Oh, I didn't pet the horse. I didn't pet the horse when it was there. I didn't pet the snake either. Um... Hold on a moment. I gotta see whether that does anything. Okay. Because I could pat the seahorse. Pat. A snake. Can't do that. Throw. Bridle. On. Snake. And. Pat. Horse. The beautiful white horse lets you stroke its velvety soft nose. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Um. Give. Clam to horse. <laughs> Not right now. Um. Use sword on horse. Oh, come on. Ah. Uh. We go straight. Fine. Okay. Well, I'm satisfied. We got a resp we got a response out of that. Oh, hello. How's it going, lad? Look, the lake is foul and stinking. It may be poisoned. All vegetation looks dead around it. There is a desolate island in the middle of the poisonous poisoned lake. A shrouded figure stands silent. Oh man, what's that? Oh, uh, what's that like? Exchange from. Curse of Monkey Island. Oh man. I, I I'm just gonna have to look this up. Uh Island Uh let me see, what's it called? No. Oh, I forget what he's called. Oh, no, no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> this. There's. It's an exchange. Uh. Uh, that's really not important. Uh, ah, that's it. It's called the Welshman, the Flying Welshman. <laughs> It's just, it's just stupid things. They will for curse forever to be sailing in the mist. Oh, how I hate that mist. I like mist. I think it's pretty. Well, sure, mist is pretty. But he got is it dull. <laughs> um, kick, death. Don't understand kick. Look, death. Look, dude. 
Look, guy. Look. F figure. Look. Bloke. Look, lad. Look, man. Look, no. The shrouded ghoul looks very frightening. His hands are little more than claws, and his face is completely hidden inside the hood of the shroud. He is standing on a small boat. His meager pay only doesn't, doesn't allow him to get a bigger one. Look, boat. The small wooden rowboat looks old and rotted from traversing the poisoned lake. Look. Man. Yeah, we said that. Okay. Look, ghoul. Does it accept that? Yeah, it does. You can't do that. Ah, oh, come on. Look, man. Yeah. Oh, Look. Punt. Look. Staff. Look. Stick. It appears to be an ordinary tent stake. That's not what I said, but interesting that it accepts stick for stake. Use stake on Matt. Can't do that. Talk to Matt. You are greeted by stony silence from a frightening ghoul. Uh, eat. Ghoul. <laughs> the ghoul doesn't appeal just now. Um, okay. Wear row cloak. Wear ring. Show ring to man. Talk to man. Get in boat. The shrouded ghoul looks at the ruby ring on your finger and the black coat cloak around your neck. He motions for you to enter the boat, which you do. You must have fooled him into thinking you were someone else. Well, I kind of jumped ahead a bit there. We probably should have tried that without putting them on, but yeah, let's do that. Okay. You know. Get in boot. The spooky fiend holds out a bony claw, as if a request for a payment of some kind. Um. Give cube to Matt. Shakes his head. He's not interested in that. He doesn't have a sweet tooth. Uh. Give clam to Matt. <laughs> to man. Ma'am. No, nope, he's not interested in the clam. Use sword on man. Not right now. Oh, come on. Wear cloak. Wear ring. Actually, what does it do if we only wear one of them? Get in boat. No, okay. Wear ring. Get in boat. Okay. You have to wear both of them. Otherwise, he's not fooled. But if you put on both of them right in front of him, get out of boat. Look, man. Yep, okay, fine. Um... Okay, so we're over here on this island. Save 21. And look. Brambles. The brambles are covered with poisoned spiked thorns that mean instant death to anyone punctured by one. Well, don't go near them then. Is this going to be like a we cannot avoid these? Or is this going to be a you just have to be careful? You have been poisoned by the thoughts and can no longer continue the game. Wow. You are dead. Just like... Dead. Instant dead. Did I accidentally bump into it? Or is that just going to occur every time because you can't get past that spot without eating the cube? Hey! There are two spooky ghosts guarding the door of the gloomy castle. This situation looks bad. Hey. Oh, come on. I tried to move slightly over to the end. <laughs> really? I like the woo noise. Look, ghost. The 
these ghostly apparitions guard an evil being lurking within the castle walls. A bit presumptuous, isn't it? Talk to ghost. When you speak to the ghosts, they utter a mournful wail. Kiss ghost. Not right now. Get ghost. Are you kidding? How do you capture a ghost? Well, you know. Um, if I had like a vacuum cleaner type type implement. Uh, give clam to ghost. Where cross? Ooh, ooh. I like that noise. You place the silver cross and chain around your neck and wear it as a necklace. Nick on. Perform X. Don't understand before. The two spirits are fooled by the black cloak and the large ruby ring that you are wearing. They slowly float away. Maybe you remind them of someone else. Oh. Oh, they just poofed. Wait, what was this? Uh, Scum VM status window just popped up with something. Uh, warning. Cyclone activated for screen object 3, but motion also active. Warning. This would have resulted in corruption in original AGI. Motion disabled. Okay. Hmm. Uh... Knock on door. When you knock on the wooden door of the castle, the sound echoes inside. There is no answer. Open door. Uh oh. Look. They got Fuchin Buck piping in through the walls. I think I have my. To, my, uh. Classical music right there. Probably pronunciation is wrong. This castle is really creepy. Cracks cover the walls. Cobwebs fill the corners. A chilly draft runs through the halls. Well, we did leave the door open. Look. Brazier. Don't understand brazier. Look. Lamp. Not carry. No, look. Torch. The torches inside the... Lend the only warmth to this dreary castle. Look. Shelf. I don't understand shelf. Look. Bookcase. See nothing special. Okay, fine. Look, floor. I don't understand floor. I'm fine. Oh boy, spiral staircase. There is a ramp spiraling up towards the top of a gloomy tower. A torch blazes on the wall. Look, torch. Okay. Um, I suppose we should go up. Is this one of those? Uh. Yep. <laughs> okay. Do do do. Climbing up the staircase. Good to know that I can fall off it. It shouldn't be too difficult though. Can you just like stick to the wall? I imagine you can. It's rather neat. This. I like how it's been laid out. Um, you know, it's pretty clear what you're doing. And that's interesting, actually, too. You're passing behind, and then you're passing in front of it. I suppose that's the background layer, then that's the foreground layer. Hmm. Where there's a bedroom. This looks kind of like a castle which I'd make in Minecraft or something, all out of cobblestone. The musty bedchamber is at the top of a tower. It has the smell of mold and old mothballs. There is a sagging bed and an old dresser in, dresser in the room. Ah, it smells like grandma. Look out window. You see the thorny island and the foul lake through the window. What a lovely view. Look, bed. The bed is lumpy and sagging in the middle. What? What? Hold on. F it's sagging in the middle. A faded old quilt covers it. Use bed. What do you wish to do with it? Sleep in bed. I don't understand sleep. Get in bed. The bed looks too lumpy and dusty. You wouldn't want to. Get quilt. The quilt is old and tattered. You wouldn't want it. 
Interesting that it uses the past tense there, instead of like, you don't want it. Um, look under bed. Not right now. Oh, come on. Where are we look under the other bed? Jump on bed. Look mattress. Is it spelt with two T's? Look mattress. Yeah, whatever. Um, look under quilt. Not right now. Look doona. I don't understand doona. Nah, that's a very specific Australian. Um, look cabinet. Look at desk. Look at drawers. Look drawer. Open drawer. There is a candle lying in the dresser. Drawer of the old dresser. Yeah, fine. Okay, look dresser. The old dresser is scratched and nicked. You can tell it was once a fine piece of furniture. There are several drawers in the dresser. Get candle. Got the candle and carry it with you. Open drawer. Drawer is already open, but you said there's multiple. Close drawer. Open drawer. Put clam in drawer. Close drawer. Open other drawer. Op open all drawers. Uh, search dresser. Look through dresser. Look under dresser. Dresser. Look. Whatever. Get dresser. Eat. <laughs> Dress. Fine. It's not a person. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I think we've got all that we need there. It's only opening one of them. It's only opening one of them. And it doesn't seem like there's any commands to open up other ones, so... This is actually pretty easy to navigate. Maybe they made it wider because of people complaining about the first one. They did prevent them from putting such things in the later games. I think that's actually an even worse example of being able to fall off platforms like this in um, King's Quest 3. How far down does it have to be for me to... He like scoots off the edge there. Yeah, he just like, whoop. Yeah, he actually did fall a little there. So I have to be past this first, uh... Yep! Okay, you have to be past, past the first, uh, bit there. Look under stairs. Can't do that. Look stairs. The ramp spirals steeply upwards. Be careful, you don't want to fall. Look post. Look pillar. Okay, fine. Uh. Okay, let's continue on over here. I'm actually going to save. Save 22. Now we're going for time. Ah, fine. We're having fun. Let's go for two hours for this this time. Look, table. The tabletop is completely covered with dust. Scratches scar the legs of the table. Chairs with torn padding accompany it. A delicious looking smoked ham is on the table. Look, ham. You're not carrying it. Get ham. Okay, look, ham. The smoked ham has a wonderful savoury smell. It's hard to resist tasting it. It looks as though someone has taken a bite out of it. Use ham. Get chair. 
use chair. Sit in chair. Worn chairs look uninviting to sit upon. Climb on table. No, that would just waste time. <laughs> okay, look under table. Can't do that. Look under chair. Interesting, actually. That gave me a different response. Rather than saying, I can't do that, at least not now. It said, you can't do that. So there is a response for looking under the table. It's just it doesn't say that there isn't it. Look. Shan... Oh, dear. Chandelier. Hold on. <laughs> My spelling is failing me. Chandelier. Okay. Look. What was it? There we go. Chandelier. I don't understand chandelier. Oh, well, okay, fine. It doesn't matter. Um, look. Torch. You don't see one here. Look. Roof. Look. Curtain. Don't understand curtain. Look. Drape. Well, let's uh, save again. Okay. Hey, there's another staircase. So this one looks meaner than the last one. There is a stairway spiraling up towards the top of a gloomy tower. A torch blazes on the wall. Okay, there's nothing there. Uh. Okay, we just like stepped off the... Uh... Ah. Okay, we can still fall off it. Okay, let's climb this. Oh. Yes, using the directional keys really helps with this. Behold, as Sir Graham steps off the uh, stairs. Look, there is not much here at the top of the cut tower, but an aging chest against the wall. Look out window. You see the thorny island? Okay, it's the same thing. L Look, chest. The dusty old chest is closed. Isn't this the same chest which they used in the uh, dwarves' room? Look, yeah. Oh. Open chest. The old chest is locked shut. You need to unlock it. Okay. Use sword on chest. Can't do that. Lever chest open with sword. No. I fully expected that not to work. Okay, let's uh, not fall down. Very nice that it recognizes there's walls on the far side of this staircase, so you can bump against it and uh, use that as the, uh, you know, as assurance that you're not going to fall off. Oh, hang on. I wanted to... Look down stairs. Not right now. Look stairs. The stairways appear to lead down into the dark depths of the castle. Look arch. Okay, can we just, um... Hang on, do I need to get a torch? It did, it did mention the torches. 23. Let's continue anyway. Doop do. <laughs> That's neat. It's pitch black in here. You can't see a thing. Ah. 
Uh, well, apparently we're all right. <laughs> Let's not turn away from the camera and just be. Ah! Do, do, do. Look, eyes. Yeah. Not right now. Hello? Anyone here? It's interesting that just two pixels like that can actually give a feeling of, um, like 3D. Okay, um, I gotta load. I'm pretty sure we need a torch or something here. Oh, I've got a candle. Actually, yeah, I could do that, couldn't I? So, let's speed this up. Skadoodle over to the other side of the castle. Because I think this one here is low enough for me to use. The other ones seem too high. Okay. And... Oh, light candle with torch. Use candle on torch. Light can... Candle... You hold your candle up to the blazing torch. It catches. Your light... Your candle is now lit. Blow out candle. You pucker up your lips and blow out the candle. Make wish. I don't understand make wish. Ah, oh, come on. I, one year old. Um, look. Candle. The wax candle is unlit. Oh, it's actually in a little uh, candle tray. Okay. How did I fit that in the drawer? It would have to be a pretty deep drawer. Okay. Light candle. Look candle. The wax candle burns brightly. Ouch! Hot wax stripped onto your finger. Eat candle. I like that you can blow out the candle. I hope this one is actually close enough. And that we're not going to run out of candle before we get down the stairs. I mean, you know, in real life a candle would last that long. Do, do, do. Maybe we can use the ham as a second torch. Light ham. Your ham is on fire. Ah. Oh, okay. Hey, it automatic it automatically lit it up. Hold candle. I was going to say hold candle to sort of possibly bring it out, but Actually lit up the uh, room. Look. These stairs are narrow and slippery. Both sides slope away precipitously. Foul stench wafts up to you from the gloomy darkness into which the stairs descend. You know, you're getting a bit uh, waxing lyrical with the uh, descriptions there, game. Oh, this is where I felt. Really? I, I suppose I walked to here. Fell down. I didn't die. And then I walked over here. And then fell down again. How did I not die for that game? Isn't... Actually... Can you not die by fall damage in space in uh, King's Quest 2? Because it was a thing in King's Quest 1 and many other. Look. Narrow, slippery stairs descend into this empty room. Your nose detects a foul odour coming from a doorway to the west. A rat darts across the cold stone floor and into a crack in the wall. Hmm. Um. Look, rat. You don't see a rat, but you hear scurrying sounds coming from the cracks in the wall. Uh... I don't know about you, game, but I think I'm going to, you know, contest you on that. 
it. It's right there. Put cloth in hole. Not right now. You look hole. Do nothing special. I was going to try and catch the uh, mouse by stuffing it full of stuffing the cloth into the hole and getting it that way. Look, manacles. Look, ma chains. Look, cuffs. Look. Okay, they're just nothing. Ooh. Look. There is a beautiful ornate coffin to one side of this dreadful room. Dust is everywhere, cobwebs fill the corners, and a sickly odour permeates the air. Look. Coffin. The lid of the beautifully carved coffin is closed. Knock. On coffin. Not right now. Oh, come on. Knock on lid. Open door. Open. Get coffin. You don't think you could carry around a heavy coffin, do you? Well, I suppose. Open coffin. With trepidation, you lift the heavy lid of the beautifully carved coffin. Your heart beats wildly when you see a vampire ly lying asleep inside within it. It must be Count Dracula. It must be. How's it going, buddy? Look. Vampire. Count Dracula is tall and elegantly dressed with a black cloak wrapped around him. His face and hands are chalk white. His lips are blood red. How tempting. Kiss. Dracula. You can't do- Ark! Kiss, vampire. Oh wait, he woke up. You're caught in Dracula's grasp. Saliva drips off the end of his sharp fangs. Suddenly he is aware of the silver cross you are wearing around your neck. Count Dracula is terrified at the cross. He turns into a bat and flies away. There is no one here but you. Oh, come on. Oh, boo. Open coffin. Kiss, vampire. Oh, boo. Get vampire. That is truly crazy. <laughs> Dracula's castle. Very spooky. Also, welcome. What's that thing? That is... Whatever the heck that that, that emote is, it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of terrifying in a way. It's very imaginative, though. Um, what else can we do with him? Um, I don't know. Get bit. Can I get the bit? At least not now. Ah. Bite vampire. Don't understand bite. Eat vampire. <laughs> Doesn't appeal just now. <sighs> get vampire. Yeah, I already said that. Um. He's awake. Run. Blah. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Is there anything else which I could do? I'm just messing around, honestly, because I like all the mes uh, all the messages it gives me. I'm still wearing the black cloak. And the ruby ring. So he has a spear somewhere. Unless they just look close enough. Uh, Open coffin. Use sword on vampire. Can't do that. Oh, come on. Use steak. Ham on vampire. <laughs> Use steak on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do what we're supposed to. Coffin. Use steak on vampire. Steak vampire. Kill. Vampire. You plunge the sword into Count Vampire. Count <laughs> Count Vampire. <laughs> the most unimaginatively named vampire ever. My name is Count Vampire. 
Count Dracula's sleeping body. Oh dear, it has no effect. You just woke him up. Well, I was saying use steak. Isn't the sword supposed to kill fair? Kill Dracula? Or is it something else? I thought like if you cut their head off or something like that. Eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure we have to, you know, stake him. Stab vampire with steak. Open coffin. Stab vampire with steak. Give steak to vampire. Use steak. <sighs> I mean, we're getting rid of him, but the proper thing is to kill him because we need something from him, I think. Yeah, I do have the steak. Bless steak. Don't understand bless. Sneeze. Bless you. Uh, whatever. Um. Look, steak. Are you crazy? Dracula hangs out here and you want to stand around looking at things? Well, we don't know it's Dracula in a coffin yet. We, we haven't opened it. Yeah, I suppose not. I, I did this, yeah. Can I, like, drop sword? No, I can't. Um, I, 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 I enjoy trying to guess what the game wants me to do. Um, if I truly get stuck, I will look it up. And I'll probably try a few more times. Is it with steak? <laughs> I would, if we had a steak. I use that, I've already used that joke where we picked up the steak. Uh... Open coffin. Use candle on vampire. They're supposed to be quite flammable. Close coffin. <laughs> it's just like, nah. <laughs> it's just, nope. I'm not dealing with that. Open coffin. Close coffin. Open coffin. Close coffin. I'm kind of sad there's not a uh, sting for when you open it. Like, da da! Dracula thanks you for your kind gift and flies away. I could use a bridle on him. Maybe he'd turn into a horse. If I had it still. Empty bottle. Look. Bottle. Fine. Um. <laughs> He's been cursed by the evil and enchanter. <laughs> I was a snake once, but I refused to be his mouth, so he turned me into Count Dracula. Thank you for using a bridle on me, now I've turned into a horse, and I don't even know what the heck I'm supposed to, what I was originally. Uh, um. Open. Coffin. Use steak on Dracula. It really should just be that simple, shouldn't it? Stab Dracula with steak. Uh. Well, actually, maybe we don't need to do that. I'm pretty sure you can kill him some way. Look in coffin. Trembling with fear, you peer into the ornate coffin. Finding it unoccupied, you see the interior is lined with shiny red satin. A red satin pillow lies on one end. That actually might be what we need to do. I'm... I, I, I've said before, this is my first time playing through the game, but I have watched Let's Plays of this in the past, and... It might be the remake, or it might be something we do later, but I'm pretty sure you do kill him at some point. 
Um, I mean, we have a stake. What else are we going to use the stake for? Look under pillow. Get pillow. You remove the shiny red pillow from the coffin. Lo and behold, a large gold key was under the pillow. Get key. Okay, look. Pillow. The pillow is small and made of shiny red satin. Put pillow in coffin. <sighs> Close coffin. Okay. Oh, hang on. Can we do that? Open coffin. Get in coffin. That is truly crazy. Oh, come on. Sleep in coffin. Get coffin. Look, coffin. Well, let's just close it again. Yeah. I was going to say I like, put steak in coffin, but you know. Okay, so we stole, we stole Count Dracula's pillow. And we stole his golden key. Get rat. Can I do anything with that rat? Apparently not. It's just there for appearance. Or something. Maybe it's a minion of Count Dracula. Blah. Renfield, where are you? I want to see all those old horror movies. Count Dracula and all that. I really need to at some point. And all the ones with uh, Christopher Lee in them. Um, blow out. Actually, let's have a look at this. Look, candle. Blow out candle. I mean, we don't want to waste it. I don't know whether that's necessary or not, or if it stays lit permanently. We could just light it again, I assume. Okay, uh, save 26. Now, is there going to be... Uh... Ow! Bugger it. Sounds on. Yeah, it is on. Get, uh, there we go, and, oh, I could eat the sugar cube, but if I could do this without the uh, sugar cube's help, then I feel like that's a better option. Though, hang on, if I don't eat it, then it might be, uh, I'd be missing out on some points. I'm not overly fast on getting 100%. Oh, what's this? Thank you for lifting the curse. I was a snake living peacefully in the plains and devouring unsuspecting travellers, but was turned into a horse when I didn't want to go into Dracula's coffin. <laughs> you open the coffin, trembling with anticipation, and you see inside of it a horse. <laughs> um, get in boat. Climb into the decrepit rowboat and the shrouded figure paddles across the toxic lake to the shore. Kiss. Man. Can't do that. Get. Oh, fine. Whatever. Give ham to man. He's not interested in the ham. This game's just making me hungry now. Uh, okay, um, well, we need to go back to that bridge and cross it again. Let's see. Fastest! And careful, I don't want to run myself off the edge again, as I've done like two or three times. Is it down here? Oh! Well, four times now. Hey! Oh! I wonder if the uh, fairies. Ow. I wonder if the fairies' blessing or spell protects you from the brambles. Or whether it's just like warding off Hagatha or something like that.
Okay. Come on, you. Get in boat. Get boat. Cannot get the boat. You cannot get the flask. Get flask. You cannot get the flask. Um. Okay, fastest. Save. Because we might do that. I was going to say we might be accosted by a dwarf. It'll hold me up. Hold me down. Um. Normal. Look. Door. Yep. <laughs> Knock on door. You don't really expect someone to answer the door, do you? You don't know until you try. Unlock door. The key to the third door fits easily into the keyhole. You turn the key and presto, the door opens. And again, the key disappears, revealing a world unlike any you've ever seen before. Oh, hey, uh, there. Okay, we're in a new place, and the colour palette is exceptional. The sand on the sparkling beat is a deep blue. The bright sunlight from a gorgeous pink sky dances above it, or across it. Cliffs tower above the beach. Look, see. This is an ocean unlike any you've ever seen before. It has a rainbow quality, changing colours with the movement of the water. This sea is raging and frothing, as if in a storm. Is this just like a reversed colour palette? I'm kind of tempted to just check that. Um... Let me have a look. Okay, I'll go to here. And... Go... Go... Okay, we do that. Open up paint. I... Red screen. I copy and paste it. And if we do like this, a select all, and is there a invert color? <sighs> Not really. Not really. Just a capture the window so people can see the results. Because it, you know, <laughs> this is important. There we go. So you can see, it's not really reversed. The the uh, sand gets the right colour. But the, the sea's green. It's not truly reverted. It just looked kind of like it. Anyway. Don't save. Okay, how are we going for time? Uh, well. I just kind of want to keep play playing it. It is fun. It's it's fun just finding all the silly messages and all that. Drink water. Yeah, you cough and choke for the briny water in the ocean. Okay, so it is just salt water. It's not like <laughs> alkaline water. Um, look. Sand on the sparkling beach is the deep blue. Dig hole. Look. Sand. Get sand. Okay. Let's go up the other side of the beach. And let's try not fall into the ocean. Apparently it's quite a... Uh, quite tumultuous. Interesting that it's not animated. It was animated on the other... in the other place. Save 28. Look. The sand... Y yeah. There is a fishing net in a pile on the beach. Get net. You reach down and retrieve the fishing net. Look. Net. The fishing net is fashioned from a material that is unfamiliar to you. It is smooth and tangle-proof. How do you make a tangle-proof net?
Look. Waterfall. The lavender waterfall tumbles down from the towering blue cliffs. Get waterfall. You cannot get the waterfall. Okay, can we like fish? Use net on ocean. Ocean. Fish. You cast the fishing net into the wild sea. Upon retrieving it, you see that you have caught a large golden fish. It flops from the net. It falls from the net and flops helplessly on the beach. That is a massive fish. Kiss. Fish. You don't have the fish. Get fish. You grab the flopping fish. Its mouth is wide open and its gills are extended. With difficulty, you hold the fish as it twists and turns in your hands. Kiss. Fish. No, nothing happens. Great idea, though. <laughs> Throw fish back. You throw the poor gasping fish back into the iridescent water. Gratefully, it calls to you. In return for saving my life, even though you were directly responsible for putting it in jeopardy. Though I suppose I was kind of stupid to... Well, no. I was just swimming around and the net came onto it. It wasn't like it, uh, you know, we fished it out with a fishing rod. I wish to offer you a ride across the o this ocean. Okay. Uh, Pat fish. You can't do that. Ride the fish. <laughs> Pat fish. Not right now. Kiss fish. Ah, bl ah bl <laughs> What an awkward way to uh, travel. Ah, he just tosses me onto the land. <laughs> okay, where are we now? You can see that the island is really quite small. The foliage is remarkable though. Plants and flowers have overgrown it, some growing very large, in contrast to the tiny island. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> as much fun as this is, I think I will actually call it here for the night for, well, not here for King's Quest. Um, because I believe there's more, there's still more to go. Uh, I think we are kind of close to the end of the game, but, you know, whether it will take like half an hour, I th it will probably take like 45 minutes to finish it. But yes, that will be it for King's Quest for tonight. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. We've met many peach, met many things, tried to kiss many of them, succeeded in some, failed in others, vandalized, no, stole from Count Dracula, were unsuccessful in staking him or hamming him, and so on and so forth. We'll have to see what we do next. So, yep, that'll be it for this one.